Hey everybody, welcome back. It is the Razball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am beat on the mustachio man across from me is Gray Albright. How you doing over there, Gray? Oh, I'm pretty good, man. I uh just uh just chilling, man. Just uh, doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I sound, I sound crazy. I sound so crazy right now. I'm just doing my thing, bro. You know, what's up, B Don? How you doing? I mean, in fairness, not really any different than we normally sound. So, really, no big change in that regard. Uh, well, I'm doing a. Uh, uh... <laughs> Are you? Uh... If you're watching on YouTube, you know why B Don is laughing. If you're not watching on YouTube, you're just hearing you're just, laughter. You're just hearing laughter for no reason. As Gray is trying to, you know, prove the hold the on. rosin. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, yep, yep. There you go. Now you gotta get the sweat. Oh, you gotta go back to the bag after the sweat, though. The funniest <laughs> thing is, though. Okay, so for people who are just listening, I'm trying to uh, get a baseball to stick to my fingers, like uh, the uh, Max Scherzer rosin gate that is going on right now, and uh, and uh, David Cohn on Sunday Night Baseball. I don't know if you saw this, beat on it, because I know you were on vacation, but he did a uh, an experiment where he grabbed a rosin bag. And then he wiped it off with his alcohol, with uh, alcohol, with rubbing alcohol. And then he did the uh, kids in the hall. I'm pinching your head. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, this is what, honestly, I mean, David Cohn seems like a good guy. And, every, you know, it's like uh, the experiments that uh, athletes will do. Like this is not like what is this? He's just pinching his fingers together. That's <laughs> and I'm on. I'm in the camp that I don't think Scherzer was cheating. I I'm honestly I'm in that camp. But this is not an experiment. <laughs> Pressing your fingers together. That's not an experiment, bro. That is just literally pinching your fingers together. <laughs> That's what that is. That does not pass. You're not getting through 12th grade science with that experiment. I mean, the most, ridic <laughs> the most ridiculous things uh, from, like, you know, uh, athletes trying to seem smart. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think, honestly, so here's my thoughts with the Max Scherzer thing, because, uh, you know, he's out for what, like 10 games, I think? He's out for this week and then, I guess, part of next week. So my, my thoughts are that, like, if the umpire, because we're, we're hearing the information that the umpire went out, checked his hand, and was like, hey, man, you got some uh, stuff on your hand. You got to go wash it off. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what we're hearing. So that right there, so taking that on face value, if that is actually true and that the umpire did say that, uh, to Scherzer, like, you have to go clean your hands, if he was cheating – wouldn't he clean his hands? <laughs> wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that literally be the first thing he would do? Would be like you know, because then some people, in, like I said that on the site uh, last week, and some people in the comments were like, you know, cheaters. Uh, it, it's a, a human a human condition. I don't I don't know what the comment was, but it was something like you know, cheaters will double down and and cheat further. Like what? <laughs> What? Dude, if you're, if you're getting caught, like if you're in the process of getting caught, it's like, I can tell you from experience, if I was caught cheating in school, maybe a couple times, they would say to me like, hey man, stop cheating. And you know what I would do? Stop cheating. That's what I would do. I would be like, you know what? I already got caught once. I shouldn't get caught again. That's or, you know what, the other option would be, would be to, you know, <laughs> cheat better, which would not be to use more sticky stuff. Like, it would be to find another way to cheat, not, you know, again, <laughs> double down on was already, you know, the problem there. Um, I mean, I, I, as somebody who has, like, used a rosin bag, there is a little bit of stickiness that you get with, with sweat, because... It just kind of happens with when they mix. I, I don't know why it's rubbing alcohol necessarily that they they're using. I, I whatever. 
Um, regardless of all that. Wait, though. Wait, though, though, though. Think about that for a second. Why rubbing alcohol? I guess it's like, I guess it's like are we in like, like are we in Kitty Dukakis's medicine cabinet? <laughs> like, what are we doing with rubbing alcohol, guys? It doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you go to why would you be like, you know what? I gotta wash my hands. Hey. I'm gonna go to the nail salon and ask them for rubbing alcohol. And then, like, what? Like, what are you doing with rubbing alcohol? Just go to the sink and wash your hands if you are cheating. Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, oh, like, hey, uh, here's the here's the deal. Okay, so Max Scherzer wasn't cheating, but he had rosin on his fingers, and we told him to clean his fingers. So he went and got rubbing alcohol to clean his face. Like, whoa, 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 time out, guys. He went and got rubbing alcohol? Why? Because rubbing alcohol supposedly makes things more sticky. <laughs> like, go and just wash your hands, bro. Just put some liquid soap on your hands. Hey, man, do you have Jergens? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, guy, do you have ivory soap? <laughs> just use that, bro. What? This is all the goofiest thing. And honestly, like I said, uh, to start with, I don't think he was cheating. I, I honestly think it probably was rosin and sweat. But r- rubbing alcohol? What? <laughs> this is the stupidest <laughs> thing. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. You, you were, no, I was, I was just going to say, like, I don't know. Like, I've I've listened to the to a couple of different things on, on what happened. And like what I, from what I can gather, they told him to use rubbing alcohol, which seems like just a major issue on like ESPN's fault. Like they told him to use it, and then he went and used it, and they're like, "No, no, no, that's <laughs> that's wrong. We didn't tell you to do that." <laughs> you know, go, go it's else. so funny. Like, hey, hey, man, go wash your hands. Like, uh, they're too sticky. Like, you know what? I'm gonna go do that. Then Max Scherzer went into the dugout and he got all these used pieces of gum and wiped his hands with them to try and get the stickiness off. <laughs> like, hey, hey, man, don't use stuff to wash your hands that makes your hands stickier, huh? How about that one? How about, how about that idea? Mm, I don't know, man. I, this is all so goofy that they're all trying to, like, back into, like, how he got his hands sticky it's like the rosin and the sweat did it that's i mean that's enough to make it sticky you don't need to enter into the rubbing alcohol and david Cohn pinching his fingers together <laughs> on national tv like and like what was that that was the goofiest thing ever it, like it, i can get really my hands was. sticky like i can take off i can take a price tag off of my clothes and get my fingers sticky <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to do all this other nonsense. Like, what do they think the rosin is for? If, like, they're... Like, what, right. what, what do they think it's the for? League, if not? The league. The league sanctioned rosin. That is that is there. <laughs> Just sitting there waiting to be grabbed by the pitcher. The thing the thing that the, the league gives to pitchers so they have... <laughs> to grip on the ball. Have grip on the ball <laughs> is the thing that is giving them too much grip. Oh, okay. Nobody this wants is... them to not have grip on the ball. Believe me, the batters don't want them to not have grip on the ball. Like, <laughs> come say, on. Uh, like, this uh, little, I caught, I caught this baseball, and uh, this was off the uh, the bat of uh, uh, Michael Saunders, <laughs> and this is. Look at this. This is still league sanctioned. Look at this, people. <laughs> Look at this. So dumb. I mean, so dumb. And then, uh, and then I also have on my desk. I have a bunnykins. Look at my my fingers. <laughs> Look at the bunnykins either. Okay. Anyway. All right. So if you oh, if you listen to kids. if you listen to the open, you don't skip past it until you get to the baseball stuff. You have to go to YouTube and watch <laughs> Greg. But it's. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, um, cat. Won't do it either. No, nope, nothing. <laughs> the good luck cat, the bunnykins, <laughs> nothing. Okay. Anyway, let's go. Oh uh, yeah. So let's let's keep it with the Mets because I mean the Mets, it's they're going full Mets or already like they didn't even get into a month into the season they're going full Mets. Serger's happening. Carrasco has a bone chip in the elbow. He's getting shut down. He got an injection midweek. Sounds like he's going to try and throw in a couple days, 
But depending how that goes, they may decide on surgery if that hurts and he can't, you know, resume. So the Mets have all sorts of issues going. Plus, Carrasco was having this, you know, issue of just being awful, uh, I, I think would be the correct term in regards <laughs> to his performance on the season. Yeah. Yeah, he's been pretty bad. <laughs> That was a that was a bad draft pick by me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like April. My my Aprils every year are spent like my good pitchers trying to offset my terrible pitchers. <laughs> like that's all. That's my April. It's like, uh, please, <laughs> please try and fix Carrasco's mess. <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, so I play, think Carrasco's. Yeah. I think Carrasco's out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead with your I was going to say, in his place, they called up Joey Lucchese for the spot start with the Scherzer suspension, and now Carrasco not knowing if he's going to go this week or you know at all the rest of the season. Are you interested in grabbing Joey Lucchese in his spot spot uh, spot start on Friday? He went seven innings, no earned. He had nine Ks. I mean, he's he's had you know stretches where he's looked like a very solid pitcher. Gray, are you are you in on Lucchese? And in like, what style of leagues are you actually going to look at him? Hey, it's a Joey Lucchese <laughs> <laughs> uh, of the chicken parmesan family. <laughs> I uh, I actually I I think I got Lucchese in one league. Uh, where I I bid like a dollar and unfortunately I got him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really want him. Uh, if it wasn't clear by the unfortunately, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you're an NL only, like I I didn't even bid that aggressively in NL only to be honest because I didn't really want him. I feel like this week is going to be fine because he gets the Nationals, I believe. So that's a decent matchup. I would I would even stream him in mixed leagues for that matchup. But, like, you know, looking at his numbers, I, even it's only one game. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But his fastball was only hitting 89 miles per hour. Um, he had to throw his cutter, like, 18% of the time up from 4%. I mean, he was... You know, he was really effective. As you said, his line, it was a good line. I mean, it was a good, you know, it was a good game. I just don't, I don't trust Joey Lucchese. I mean, suddenly he's going to be solid after like four years of just being so bad. I mean, just so, just like a streamer at best. And then just like not really like just absolutely detrimental to your fantasy teams at worst. <laughs> I mean, so I, I honestly, I, I grabbed him. Like I said, I will, I'll, I'll start him this week because he gets the nationals, you know, it's a, it's a good matchup. Like I said, but I'm not really into Joey Lucchese in most mixed leagues and even in NL only, I purposely bid low because I didn't want to get my heart broken by Joey <laughs> Lucchese. I was like, you know, out of a thousand dollars, uh, fab, I bid 12 bucks and he went for like, I think he went for like a hundred something. And I was like, eh, good luck guy. <laughs> not, not me, man. Not, All not, you. not this guy. Yep. Yeah, no, not me. Yeah. I'm pretty much on the same page, maybe a little bit higher on him in, in only leagues just because, he should at this point, just based on what the Mets have, have already started to, to crumble apart, he should get some starts here. So just for inning purposes in an only league, I could see him having some value. But yeah, for the most part, not really interested. Uh, a pickup and stream against the right matchups. And that's about it. Moving on, Garrett Mitchell is going to have to have season-ending shoulder surgery. That's That's just really bad. You know, it sucks for him but for our purposes Joey Weimer seems to be you know set to be the primary center fielder so far he's got a home run two stolen bases five runs five RBIs he's hitting 290 he's got a 20 percent K rate and an 11.6 percent walk rate they've also got Sal Sal Frelick on the IL for a thumb issue in the minors currently but he could get a look down the road if they need somebody out in the outfield as well uh I mean, where are you at on Joey Weimer? I mean, he, does he need to be owned if he's not already in every single league? And then what do you think about Sal? Are you grabbing him 
in only leagues? Are you still just waiting on him? Or I mean, only leagues he might already be on. What was your the stats for Joey Weimer? Where were is that from? Yeah, pull when, him. Is that from when he became a, a center fielder? Or when, when I, those stats did not line up with reality at all. Okay. Um. So uh, he has one homer, two steals, and he's hitting two nineteen, not not two ninety. I don't know where that came from. Uh. But you know, w- with that said, I would pick up Joey Weimer and you know, deeper mixed leagues because he does have power and speed. I think uh, the speed's really the most attractive skill he's got. I think uh, more than likely because, I mean, he, he seems like one of these guys, like he does have speed, so his Babbitt should be high, and right now his Babbitt is low, so his average can come up from 219, but he does kind of seem like one of these guys that we're getting a lot of recently where – they just make really terrible contact. Like I'm, I'm thinking of like C.J. Abrams. Like there's these guys that are just like noodle, like noodle bats. Like not really. Like I don't know. Just not, not great hitters in general. Even though they don't necessarily strike out a ton. Um, anyway, with that said, I would grab Weimer in uh, deeper mixed leagues because of the speed. I probably would be like, you know, I would platoon him maybe in and out of my lineup in a 12-team mixed league, but only if I were really desperate for steals. I don't think uh, Freelick, I like Freelick if he was up, but, you know, you mentioned the thumb issue already. I don't really think the thumb, I I don't think he's coming up any time before, like, I want to say June. So in most mixed leagues, you're... You're not going to sit on him for six weeks. Like, I I think he's probably, he's at least June, I think. Um, You know, I didn't really even understand the free lick draft picks this, uh, you know, in the, uh, in during uh, the preseason when people were drafting free lick, I didn't really fully understand it because he just, even without the thumb issue, I don't think, like, they would have just started the year with him if they were going to go with free lick. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really heavily invested in free lick. I mean, if he comes up, then by all means, I think he's I think he's probably the best outfielder they have right now. Um, but I don't know when he comes up, and I don't think it's that soon. So I don't know. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, I think it could be fairly soon. They're, I mean, they're definitely going to want to get him, you know, back to healthy and make sure that the thumb's okay before that happens. But I mean, they're po- starting like. Blake Perkins and Owen Miller and Mike Brusso in right field right now. That's or like just platoon. I guess Jesse Winker as well. Like it's not a it's not a great list of players that they're running out there for right field. I, I think there's a possibility that you know if 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 Frelick or Freelick comes around and like he's just he picks up after the thumb injury and starts hitting. I think there's a chance they take a look at him, but you know, it's it's very possible that they just let him, you know, sit around until, you know, super two time. They've made their call up with with Weimer. I think you're also right that if they wanted him up, they they might have just given him the job out of out of camp as well. So it's an it, there's probably something that they're looking for him to improve on that they want to see him uh, you know, show at a higher level than high A ball, which is is kind of where he spent, you know, a lot of, of last year was a double A. And so maybe they just want to see some more triple A. I don't know. It, it, any more double A is just a challenge than it's triple A for the most part. So we'll we'll see. Moving on, uh, Logan O'Hop, our, our favorite catcher, you know, flyer guy, was a, has going to have to have season ending surgery on his shoulder for a torn labrum. A four to six month recovery. Matt Tice is the re- is his direct replacement. Any interest in him? And if not, who are you looking at for some catcher replacements, Grant? Mm, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was uh, actually Ohapi. Um, is I think how the Angels announcers were pronouncing it. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, but I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that was brutal because it's like you find you 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 hit on a uh, a catcher late, 
And then, you know, he actually is doing well, and he then he goes down for injury. It was just brutal. I mean, it was brutal luck. It really was just, you know, obviously worse luck for him. <laughs> but, you know, uh, that goes without saying. Um, yeah, thighs. I actually, I mean, I grabbed, uh, uh, well, Donkey and I grabbed Matt Thighs in uh one in our main event league uh that we we're uh, co-managing for uh six dollars out of uh a thousand fab and we were the only ones to bid on them you know take that for what it's worth i i don't i don't mind math thighs in a it's a two catcher by the way it's a two catcher uh 15 team mixed league so it's a pretty deep league so for our second catcher i don't know i i mean i don't mind it for a second catcher He's not a first catcher, though, unless he gets hot and then he becomes a waiver wire pickup. But for now, yeah, he's not. I mean, Matt Thighs is a, a second catcher in a deeper league. Um, he's a, uh, right, what is his numbers? It looks like he had 10 homers and seven steals and a 268 average in AAA last year, but he was 27. He looks like a quad A player. Uh, so, you know, maybe you get a few, you know, you maybe you get a few homers and hopefully he hits above, you know, 220. Um, you know, Jonah Heim has been great. Uh, Shea Langoliers has been awesome. I've been still rocking Blake Sable in a lot of leagues. So, I mean, there's catchers out there in most, in, in single catcher leagues, you shouldn't have too big of a problem finding a catcher. Elias Diaz isn't bad. If uh, the Rockies are home, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what his splits look like, but I I don't start many Rockies in away games anyway, so it doesn't even matter what his splits are. I would only start him at home. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he said pretty much home away splits like every other uh, Rocky for his career, so I, I wouldn't expect that to really change. Uh, you know, I think the names you threw out are, are good replacements. If you have, again, if you have specific questions, you can always put them out there in the comments. I know I missed a, a couple of comments on the YouTube side. Sorry, I was on vacation. I'll, I'll make sure I get those next week uh, and going forward. Moving on, the Yankees, John Carlos Stanton, he's out with a grade two left hamstring strain. That's at least four to six weeks. Uh, Oswald Peraza is getting starts at third base with Donaldson also out for at least a couple of weeks with a grade one hamstring strain. Who would have thought a bunch of 30 year olds might have some hamstring strains here and and especially <laughs> Donaldson and Stanton um mm. you know it seems like Peraza is kind of the beneficiary for Donaldson DH seems to be kind of like they're using Rizzo there a little bit and they're using it for off days for everyone maybe Franchi gets some starts there occasionally but even though he got off to kind of a hot start they really aren't giving him any kind of consistent looks in on the field are you interested in Peraza and anybody else for the Yankees as as kind of fill-ins here? You know, I like Peraza a lot, but they don't seem committed to playing him every day. Unlike, uh, you know, with like uh, Oswaldo uh, Cabrera, who they've sort of have committed to. Um, yeah, I, I, Peraza, for whatever reason, isn't getting the same commitment. And even though I think Peraza is better than uh, the Franchi Cordero Willie Calhoun nonsense that they're currently rolling out there. So yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of surprised they're not giving Peraza the, the everyday uh, at bats in um, at least somewhere they have the DH and right field that they're just sort of, you know, doing whatever with, and they could move uh, LeMahieu at a DH, maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, you know, with that said, I like Praza, but he's just not playing enough. Like, I think Praza could be a, a 15 homer, 25 steal, 245 average guy, like, this year if he were to play every day. But he's not playing. So, you know, it's kind of irrelevant what he could do with the, with the everyday, every, uh, everyday playing time if he doesn't have it. Um the guys who are playing, yeah, Franchi Cordero is super boring. I, I mean, he was he was hot for that one week, but obviously that was just going to be, you know, a hot potato type situation. And Willie Calhoun, I mean, I was reading this uh, 2012 sleeper post on him that has me really <laughs> interested. 
<laughs> so I will say Peraza started five of the last six games. You know, that was during the stretch where Donaldson was injured and then got put on the, the IL. But if he's going to start at third base every day or, you know, five out of six, I'll take that. Absolutely. So I think there is a potential that, you know, he may be actually falling into everyday playing time. And in that case, I do think he's he's somebody uh, worth picking up in even, you know, 12 team mixed leagues. Probably not 10 team because he's hitting six through nine, which isn't necessarily what you're looking for in a, in a 10 teamer. But, you know, if you're looking for kind of that mix, you could you could go for him still if you just need uh, somebody with positional eligibility because he should. It looks like get third base definitely uh, to add to it. And we'll see where else he gets kind of, uh, you know, starts with the DH open. They've they've given Glaber a day off. Uh, like I said, Rizzo's been getting some time. DJ Lemayhu, I'm sure, will get some starts at DH. So it's it's kind of a rotating thing, and and Prasa might get some some nice eligibility in season. Mm. Yeah. Moving on, um, Trevor May is placed on the IL with anxiety related issues. Uh, Danny Jimenez was already on the IL with his shoulder issue. It looks like it's going to be some combination of Zach Jackson and Jerry Familia, although Jerry Familia has been very bad, but he got a save on Friday. Zach Jackson seems to be the, you know, break glass when there's an emergency guy. Are you interested in Zach Jackson? Would you even touch Jerry Familia? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Please no. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, I, uh, I, I put in a bid, uh, I think, uh, $3, $3 out of a thousand for Zach Jackson. And I, I, I won him in, uh, a 15 team mixed league. You know, I, I honestly, I don't even think I'm starting him though. I think he's on my bench. I just, I won him, And I think I, uh, you know, I'll see how this week goes with the, the A's, uh, situation with the closers, but even, I mean, as few few wins as they actually get, I mean, this is a really bad situation. And Familia is awful. I mean, Familia is really terrible. Like right now, it's only ten innings, but right now he has a three point six K per nine and a seven point two walk per nine. <laughs> Those sound like they should be inverted. I mean, that's really <laughs> bad. So, I mean, I would go Zach Jackson over Familia. But I probably wouldn't start either of them, uh, even if uh, unless it was an AL only league. I would probably just bench them both and just to see what happens because it's not worth a blow up for no reason because the A's are probably not even going to win any uh, games. Yeah, that's completely fair. They have four wins on the season. They are four and eighteen. Gray, that's that's. Uh, I mean, you look at the roster. That's not surprising. I will say if you have Zach Jackson, you could potentially throw him out there, even if he's not going to get saves just because his number is going to be clean. And that's, I mean, that's not nothing, but I'm, I'm with you. I wouldn't expect a whole lot of saves out of either. And if they're going to kind of use Jackson wherever in the, in the biggest situation of their, their games, then that means even less potential opportunities. So not a whole lot that I think is actionable there unless you're in very deep leagues. Call-ups, let's move on to a couple of those. Mason Miller, he got the call-up. He went four and a third innings, two earned, five Ks, one walk versus the Cubs. I mean, he's he's power, fastball, slider guy. It's I mean, it's it's great stuff. Where are you at on Mason Miller? Is he is he a 10 team league guy for you, or are you looking a little bit deeper than that? Uh, yeah, I mean, 10 teams are super shallow, but I probably would grab Mason Miller in a 10 team league. I think he's probably, he's worth rostering in every league. I think, you know, uh, so his innings are just, I mean, he's had so few innings, of course, uh, like over the course of like three years or four years, I think he's at like under 30 innings, um, in like four years or something like something just silly silly low uh so i don't know how many innings he's gonna be able to throw this year i'm hoping you know hopefully he can throw like 50 to 75 innings but even that feels like really high 
after just saying that he's only thrown like 30 in four years. So, you know, if he stays healthy, more power to him. Uh, as long as he's throwing in the rotation, I think he's probably rosterable in like every league. Like it, it seems unlikely that you have like, uh, you know, maybe in a 10 team league, if your pitching is that stacked, then, you know, hold off on them, but definitely in a 12 team le- uh, mixed league for sure. I mean, Mason Miller's like, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see a better, like a guy who's, you know, inning his, his per inning, uh, fantasy values, like through the roof, like it, he may only throw, you know, 50 innings, but it's going to be a really good 50 innings. So I would grab them. You know, don't expect wins, obviously. You can't expect them to, like, you know, stay in the game late. Um, even, and the A's are not going to give much offense. So, you know, wins are going to be hard to come by. But everything else should be good. I, I would definitely grab Mason Miller if you have room on your team, for sure. Yeah, he could be a, you know, one of the top per inning producers. I will say if you're looking for wins. Probably not your guy based on the fact that it's, you know, they're going to limit his work and he pitches for the A's, but he should give you good numbers across the board. Good enough that it, you know, it really shouldn't matter that he's not contributing wins necessarily and wins, like, you know, like are fluky. Although I don't, again, I don't know how many times he's going to go through the entire fifth inning uh, for the A's. Moving on, let's talk about Logan Allen. The Guardians called him up. He went six innings. He gave up five hits, one earned. Eight Ks, one walk in his first start. I mean, I guess the thing that we talk about here is, is primarily, you know, do you think this is a permanent role? We got Tristan McKenzie out until at least the end of May, uh, but he has started his throwing program. Uh, Aaron Savale is out with a oblique strain. He's out at least a few weeks. And there's a couple of guys in their minor league system that could potentially take a look at as well if Logan Allen struggles. Where are you at on the Logan Allen pickup? Is he prioritized? Under or over Mason Miller, if you're making pickups, he he did have more innings. Obviously, I mean, everybody has more innings than Mason Miller. Uh, <laughs> so that's really not a same thing. But he had, he had like 130 innings last year uh, in the minors. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was kind of surprised Logan Allen felt like a bit of, a, you know, an afterthought with most people. Because I could have sworn he was well, you know, well ranked and uh, well regarded as a prospect and his numbers back that up. I mean, like his numbers in the minors look great. I, you know, but he kind of felt like an afterthought when it came to like fab and, um, you know, just maybe, uh, you know, even in an AO only league, I think in an AO only league where we're in it together, like he, you know, he was bid on today, but he was sitting there for his Sunday start. Like I, I messed up. I should have bid on him Saturday for a dollar. I mean, there's no reason, you know, it was a, da- it's a daily league pickup, um, which doesn't really make sense. I don't know why that league is a daily league pickup, but any, that's a, <laughs> that's a side story. for me. I to, don't know either. I, I, I need to, I need to talk to Scott White of uh, CBS. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Logan, I think Logan Allen, I mean, as long as he's in the rotation, He's going to be able to throw deeper into games. He's going to have a better chance for wins. He probably won't be. I mean, he's not going to be per inning as exciting for K's as Mason Miller. But Logan Allen can be easily be better than Mason Miller uh, as far as fantasy value goes because of wins and innings. And he's in the rotation, at least for now. I mean, you know, uh, Savalier, when he returns or McKenzie returns, you know, at some point, Logan Allen could get bumped. But as of right this second, yeah, I mean, Logan Allen seems like he's got a spot in the rotation. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there are, <clears throat> there is Tanner Bibby and Gavin Williams, who they also have in the minors. Bibby's a triple A. Gavin Williams is a double A. I mean, they're both performing spectacularly down in there. Um, Peyton Battlefield got called up. He's made his second start. He's thrown 10, 10 and two thirds. He has a 169 ERA and an 094 whip so far in those two starts. So, I mean, he's he's performed very admirably in his two starts. But if that goes south, you know, Logan Allen easily takes his spot. Zach Plesak's been consistently bad for them. So, you know, they could <laughs> potentially move him to the bullpen. 
That was a uh, good. Not- a, uh, that was a, that was a good Gordon Ramsay uh, uh, dig. <laughs> this <laughs> this is terrifically bad. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is really good. If you want to vomit, <laughs> you know I've been watching Catching Nightmares, and uh, I went back and looked at his his hit rate. He he's like a seventeen percent hit rate on the on the places he fixed. I mean, I feel I don't feel so bad as a fantasy analyst knowing that Gordon Ramsay only fixed seventeen percent of the places he went. Like shit, <laughs> there was a place. There was a place where he in L.A. He came to L.A. the Kitchen Nightmares, and he like quote unquote fixed it up and it was out of business like by the time the show aired <laughs> it was so bad couldn't even get the it show bump <laughs> didn't even get the show bump no <laughs> anyway yeah. all right uh, so. i mean let's talk about it real quick i mean tanner bibby gavin williams are you interested in either of those guys just a, a potential watch, watch list type of situation and which one would you be which one do you think gets the call if either you know, Savale's oh. out for longer. If McKenzie trips up, and please, if they again, if they decide against Police Second, they got plenty of people that could that they could bump out and, and make room for these guys. Yeah, I think I think Bibby is. I think he's going to be one of the next uh, big call ups. I think he's probably due any day now. Really, I think uh, you know uh, Battenfield. Did I say his name right? <laughs> I think yeah, so. I think so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Battenfield, I think is. Um, I think he's like due for like a blow up. I, I don't think he's really good. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, one, one more opening. I think Bibby is up for sure. Uh, I I think we could see a rotation I, or even police could like have, you know, like you said, he was terrible. He is terrible. So he could have one more blow up and get bumped from the rotation or, they can make up a phantom IL stint maybe for him or something. I think Bibby's real soon. Gavin Williams, I don't know about. I feel like Gavin Williams, he's still at double A, right? So I think he's further off. I, I don't I don't think Gavin Williams is coming that soon. Yeah, I think by the by placing Gavin Williams at double A and putting Bibby at triple A, they kind of gave you gave us all the hint of who they would like to kind of be the next call up rather than you know having us guess and sticking on both the triple a i think it's pretty clear that that bibby's next and then maybe gavin williams moves up and takes bibby's spot triple a and we get that cycle and and maybe we see a a look at gavin williams later in the season if they have any more issues in the in the rotation Um, bailey ober he got the start on sunday five and two thirds four k's three walks versus washington is Ober last among these guys for you? Where is he in? Where is he sitting for you among among the grabs? What's the Ober under? <laughs> I, uh, I I like Ober a lot. I just don't think he's. I actually I think he doesn't have a spot in the rotation. Unfortunately, I think uh, unless uh, Kenta Maeda is you know more injured than he's letting on or that the Twins are letting on. I don't I don't think Ober's got a spot in the rotation. If he does. I'm all about it. I, I like him a lot. I actually think he could be more valuable. So going back to Logan Allen and Mason Miller, I think Uber, uh, Uber, <laughs> call an Uber, Ober. I think Ober could be um, better than Miller and Logan Allen, just simply because like he could throw innings and he has good good command. Uh, but I, I don't think he's got a real spot in the rotation. Like that was a spot start on Sunday and I don't know, like, you know, maybe he gets another start because Maida can't get healthy, but yeah, as of right now, I I just don't see it. I I just don't see the, yeah, the innings for him. So yeah, I, I, I like him though. If he were to have a spot on the rotation, it's a, you know, he's a good stash for like uh, AL only or, or even a deeper mixed league. He's a decent stash for like maybe, Deeper than fifteen team mixed, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, you got you got to expect him not to be starting. I, I think at this point, yeah, I, w- I would assume so, unless we get some bad news on Maeda. I do think he's even if he was going to get, you know, we'll say a month because that's that's kind of the the time frame for for Logan Allen to have you know a definite role, and then maybe it gets extended beyond that. 
I, I think I would still put him third amongst the Alan Miller Ober group, just because I, I don't know that his K's are going to carry over into the majors like the, it will with the other two. You know, his biggest stop last year in, in double A was 56 innings. He had a 22% K rate. His biggest stop the year before that was, you know, 92 innings. He did get 92 innings with the Twins. That was a 25% K rate. So I think he settles in that like 24, 20 to 24% K rate range, which is fine. I, I think the other two potentially have a little bit more upside on that, especially Miller. And again, but Miller's, you're going to lose out on the win. So kind of a balance there. Moving on, uh, Ronnie Mauricio, while we're talking about potential call-ups, I guess, you know, he's got 20 uh, games, 81 plate appearances in AAA. He's hit six home runs, three stolen bases. He's hitting 360, 407, 720. Last year in AA in 123 games, he went 26, 20, 259, 296, 472. Is this one of the, the next guys that's calling up that you're interested in? Man, those numbers just sounded so silly. Um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I think the Mets are, you know, the Mets are, are taking cues from the Yankees when they should be taking cues from the Braves. Like, they have, you know, between uh, Beatty and Mauricio, they sh- the, the Mets should be going young, and instead they're signing all these old vets. Um, I mean, I don't know where's Mauricio going to play. I, I mean, I guess if Mick, you know, if, uh, Jeff McNeil or, um, you know, someone there gets injured, I guess he could get called up, but I, I, I just don't see the playing time. So I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, his numbers sound really nice, <laughs> but I just, <laughs> I just don't know where he's going to play. Unfortunately. I mean, they're not even like Buck Showalter's not even playing BD every game so yeah i don't know yeah it's gonna be tough because they you know mcneil can play all over the place you already mentioned you know brett Beatty's not playing every day francisco alvarez isn't playing like why'd they call francisco alvarez at all <laughs> given the amount of times he's playing like that that's absurd to me um so yeah the right? bets seem yeah, very no, stuck that's in a really dome. one yeah i forgot about that one yeah the alvarez one is really stupid like they called him up to be a backup to Nito? Like, what? <laughs> like, really? There's not 85,000 veteran catchers you could drag off the street to sit on the bench like, rather than call right? him up? Right? Like, what is that going is on? So, yeah, that is so dumb. Like, I honestly, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like this is more Buck Showalter, though, than the Mets. Like, this feels like Showalter is doing this. Like, he's the one who's, uh, you know, leaning on the vets and letting the uh, the rookies, like, have to earn their playing time, which is just stupid. I mean, look at the Braves and how they've, like, you know, or any team. Like, if guys are hitting, like I've said before this, but, like, if guys are hitting in AAA – they can hit in the main, like if, like if the guy's hitting 360 in the in AAA at 21 years old or 22 years old, like he could hit in the majors. Like he doesn't need more seasoning. Like that's you know that's just like you're just wasting a guy at that point. Now, Greg, I mean, he's got to keep Eduardo Escobar in the in <laughs> the the lineup every day because in September he's gonna hit like 320. And they had a home run, so like he has to get the at bats. No, I mean it, it's absurd. I don't know what's going on with the Mets in regards to their lineups and their call ups. But yes, I'm with you. I, I really think Mauricio should get a look, and I think Alvarez should play. I think Betty should play. Um, but yeah, th- I think Mauricio he's he's on the cusp. If they can find him a place to play, I, I would say they're not going to call him up and sit him on the bench. But we've already seen them do that with two top prospects, so. We will see on that one. Let's just move on to a couple other topics, Gray. Not injury related, non call up. Um, you know, I, I I had I have plenty of share, or I I, I have some shares of of Juan Soto. I, I think you do too. I think everybody in the baseball world was back in on Juan Soto because you know he's a generational talent. How could he be bad? Well, he's hitting 192 right now. His OBP is 357. So if you're an OBP, you're you're not as is hurt. Uh, he has four home runs, one stolen base, which is fine. 
K rate is up this year. I know it's early, but K rate is one of the first things to stabilize. Launch angle, another one of those things that tends to stabilize pretty quick. 6.2, which is not good. Uh, we need him to launch more than that to give us the power that we want out of him and his bounce back. I mean, is is the Padres is San Diego killing him? Like, what's going on here, Gray? <laughs> Like he's still hitting the ball plenty hard. Like that's not an issue. <laughs> um. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is like sexy Dr. Pepper, man. Juan Soto is like a generational talent, supposedly, right? <laughs> he's like <laughs> batting title competitor right? he's, as a rookie, and he's been a batting title competitor every year until he went to San Diego. Um, yeah, man, like his, I mean, like expected batting average is a goofy stat. Oh, yeah, so, it's, you it's, know, like it's it's got so many flaws to it. So take it with a grain of salt, but his expected batting average is 251 right now. Like that's by far the lowest of his career. Like even last year it was 266. Like his, I mean, his launch angle is like kind of garbage. His, <laughs> his swinging now, his Ks are up, his strikeouts, like you said, which stabilizes. And now he's like starting to like the, uh, the number of swings he's uh, outside of the strike zone is up. His percentage of swings of balls in the strike zone in the strike zone is way down. Like it, it's really like. I, it seems like he's even losing which pitches to swing at, which is really not good, man. <laughs> he's not. I mean, he's not making good contact. His contact is way down. His, you know, everything, like all the stuff that you want to see from a guy like Juan Soto, it's like, I mean, he is taking a lot of pitches, but he's taking pitches in the zone. He's taking pitches out of the zone. Like he's just not swinging. So he's not aggressive. He's and when he is swinging, he's grounding the second base. Like leave the second baseman alone, man. Start hitting fly balls, bro. Like he could he could be a forty homer, fifteen steal, three twenty hitter. He's not that right now. <laughs> He's not, I mean, right now, I would be, you know, like, if he were to continue where he is right now without getting hot, which, you know, I mean, getting hot, like, is not necessarily a guarantee. Like, he could be a 25 homer, uh, two, 250 hitter. Like, and last year he hit two, well, he hit 242 last year. So even saying 250 might be, you know, might be stretching things. I mean, he could be, he could be a 25 homer, 240 hitter with, you know, how many ever, how, how many steals you're going to get from him? Like maybe seven steals. So that's awful. <laughs> like that's really bad. Like that is not even close to a, a, a top 15 overall guy. And to say like, it's absurd to say that. That would literally just be what he did last year. Like, maybe, like, maybe what we saw with Juan Soto in his, like, early years, maybe, like, maybe that comes back at some point. But right now, the, uh, the like, trajectory he is on right now for this season looks like a continuation of last year. And last year was an awful year for Juan Soto. So, you know, like, there's a potential here where, his K's are way up and like last year, his K's were down and he had a terrible year. So now he's going to have a lot of strikeouts and ground the ball <laughs> to the second baseman, every other at bat. This is not good, man. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a matter of whether or not it was the shift. This is his launch angle. And he has just not been aggressive enough at the plate. Like, it's just not good. I don't know. Maybe, if, maybe, maybe he changes things. You know, maybe this is just a slump. But I would be super concerned. I, uh, I honestly, I don't have Juan Soto in any leagues. Um, I didn't, 
And that was just, I would have drafted him. It just was a matter of where I was in, you know, in draft order. It just didn't happen. But yeah, I would be real concerned if I had him. Yeah, I had a lot of early picks, so I didn't have Juan Soto in a ton of places, but I have him in, a, in, a, in enough that I have noticed that he's been just downright awful for my teams. I mean, he's hit, he has a 15% infield fly ball rate right now, Gray. He has a 5.3% line drive rate. 5.3% line drives. Dude. He is just beating the ground into the ball. He has a 60% ground ball rate. He is beating the ball into the ground. So between the ground ball and infield flies, 75% of the balls he's put it in play are ground balls and infield flies, Greg. Like, that has to change. I, I, I don't know. Like, again, he's 24 years old. We're talking about a guy who had 351 at age 21. Like, he hit 313 at 22. I, I can't believe he's done and cooked at 24. But I also Donnie, can't ignore Donnie that like, he's just beating the ball into the ground. Like, at 23, dude. If he does, if he yeah. repeats last year, then we could see the decline started last year if, if this is, like, what's going on. Like, I mean, this I, ever happen? Can you ever remember somebody having this yeah, happen? That wasn't, yeah, like, Cody they Bellinger. tore their shoulder out of their <laughs> – like their arm literally <laughs> fell out of their socket. Like Cody Bellinger, who's turned his career around um, <laughs> this year. When he plays the Dodgers, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess uh, Christian Yelich had like those insane years, and then the launch angle caught up to him too. I, he yeah, was, like, in I, his late twenties, early thirties, well, when that started to happen, more, yeah, he was more in his prime. Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably. For a guy to come up and do what he did, like as a 19, 20 year old, and then be cooked at 24? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Juan Soto really 45 years old? <laughs> <laughs> did we buy into the 20, but he was really, because he does look older. Oh, yeah. He never looked like he was a 19 year old. Like yeah. that didn't never. That didn't okay. really feel right. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Juan, Juan Soto and Jordan <laughs> Walker. Both on the cover of AARP. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully, Juan Soto comes out of it. And but right now, the numbers don't look good, guys. <laughs> and and maybe <laughs> two girl listeners, they don't look good. All right. Yeah. So we will wait and see. I guess. What do you do? Are you are you actually making? Are you trading Juan yeah. Soto away? Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Okay. You know, I'm not. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> While while there's still like a chance for my teams, like someone just asked me if like they would I would trade Juan Soto for Randy Rosarina and uh, you Darvish. Uh, oh, it was actually the trade was uh, Juan Soto and Woodruff for a uh, Rosarina and Darvish, and I was like, yeah, I take Rand, I take Randy Rosarina for sure. If uh, that was the trade, I don't know who's doing that trade. I mean, y- you know, you get. You can hear trades offered, and you're like, is someone really doing this trade, or, or did you just come up with this trade in your head? <laughs> Are you just trying to put stuff together and, yeah. and see if anybody would say yes to it? Yeah, exactly. You're just Are you just putting stuff together? <laughs> um, but you know what? Yeah, I would take a Randy Rosarina. I would take, like, I think Randy Rosarina for me was, like, maybe my 12th or 13th outfielder in my rankings. And Juan Soto was like my fifth or sixth. I mean, that's not that big of a fall off. I'd probably take a Rosarina straight up for Juan Soto. I mean, I actually not probably I would, I would take Randy Rosarina. I would probably take, you know, I mean, there's a lot of guys I would probably take at this point for Juan Soto up to like, you know, I, I mean, I wouldn't go crazy with myself. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh, you know, Cody Bellinger's fixed himself. I'm taking Cody <laughs> Bellinger. Like, I wouldn't go that nuts, but I would, honestly, I would look at trades for sure. Because if, Juan, like, I lived through the Juan Soto thing last year, and I so I can feel for people. I, I wouldn't want to live through it again because <laughs> it was not good. Like, he tanked my teams last year, like, it's very, it's not like my Tower Wars team right now is in first place. Last year, I didn't sniff 10th place because of Juan Soto. <laughs> like, it was bad last year. And this year, I got Max Muncy, baby. I'm flying. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, let's move on to somebody who also hasn't performed, but maybe turning it around, and that is Alec Manoa, our boy. We need him to turn it around. At the Yankees, he went seven innings, zero earned, five Ks, one walk. He got the horizontal movement on his pitches dialed up, especially the fastball. The fastball was moving like we're used to seeing it, but really, like, all his pitches were moving like Alec Manoa looked all last year. He got himself out of some trouble in the third. I kind of never left the Alec, Alec Manoa bandwagon. I've always been on it because, I, I mean, my teams are on it, so I might as well be on it. Where, where are you at on Manoa at this point? I, I think you were a little lower on him last time we talked than I was. But where where are we at? Because there was also, like, the pitch clock maybe speeding him up because he was he's among the, the slowest and all, all of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe also too the we- the weather warms up. You know, maybe he gets better at that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pot committed, so I can only I can't get out at this point. Unfortunately, I benched him at, at Yankee Stadium, but you know, uh, I mean, I wasn't starting him in Yankee <laughs> Stadium. So son of son of a bench, but yeah, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. I yeah, I mean, I still would like to see. You know, like seven seven innings, five Ks. You know, it's only one start, but uh, it's not like you know. It wasn't like he oh well, you know, he, he found twelve Ks in in seven innings or something. It was still like you know, and uh, it was an okay start. <laughs> it was better better to see that than have him blow up. But yeah, I mean, it's a good it, like you said, horizontal movement it was dialed up. He, he's gotten you know he was able to work out of trouble. It's Positive. Yeah. It's positive. Velocity is heading in the right direction. Like hopefully, like at this point, I'm just hoping I get like a, a a a number two starter out of them. Like if I can get like basically what I would hope for from like Logan Webb out of Alec Manoa, I'll, I'll take it at this point. Uh, like that's what I'm hoping. So, yeah. And if I get any more, you know, it's gravy. So, and you know, he's a big boy. He likes gravy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I still uh, I still kind of expect him to turn this all around. So I'm I'm not necessarily changing expectations all that much. Uh, I never thought he was going to necessarily be a you know a thirty percent K guy, but I do think the K's will will return to you know mid twenties area and be he'll be fine. So there we are. Moving on, Johan Aviedo. Is there is there something here, Gray? He finished last season strong. You know, a low three ZRA in September. He's throwing the slider a bunch. Are you, are you buying this pitch mix change with the Johan Oviedo? Wow. Uh, I you know what? If I would have known in my, if someone if someone jumped out of a DeLorean and and came up to me in March and was like, "Hey, man, I'm a time traveler. Just you know, all you got to do is draft all Pirates pitching." I'd be like, "What? <laughs> Get out of here, bro. Who are you?" You ain't no time travel. You're stupid. <laughs> you sound you sound dumb, bro. Um, yeah, Oviedo, huh? Looks good. I mean, it's hard to argue with the numbers right now. I mean, his his strikeouts look good. His walks, his commands. He's ninety six mile per hour fastball. A slider, an eighty nine mile per hour slider. It all looks good on Oviedo. I'm I'm buying in until. You know, I see something different. Like, it looks like something has clicked for him. And that's, you know, at least in 12-team mixed leagues and deeper, you want to get on, you want to get in on guys who could potentially be breaking out. And he looks like he could be breaking out. So, yeah, I'm I'm buying in for now, you know, until we see something else. But it looks good. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, it was a a – you know, mental change to throw the slider more, and that seems to be having its its dividends. So yeah, absolutely with you, grabbing him, starting him until we see anything that says we shouldn't be. Honestly, uh, moving on, Tony Gonsolin is returning. I mean, I guess we should be excited for a guy who had a two one four year rate and a zero eight seven WHIP last year with a twenty four percent K rate. But oh you know, yeah, and plus he's going to start at Pittsburgh. On Wednesday, so all that lines up. You, I mean, he's already owned, so you, there's nothing really to talk about that there. But are you ex- as excited as one should be for a two ERA, sub one <laughs> whip pitcher to come back? 
because I'm, no. I'm I'm kind of not, and I maybe it's no. just us not liking Tony Gonsolin because we've always kind of said he's he's overperforming, he's on the right team. Yeah. Where are you at? Yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, he was kind of an interesting one in the preseason because I felt like he was uh, not being drafted like for how well he did because everyone assumed he was he overperformed last year, so. He was almost like he was still a little tad underrated because everyone just thought he overperformed by so much that no one was drafting him at all. But then, you know, with the injury that happened, that that set him back. And, you know, um, and, and then people had more reason to be out on it because of the injury. Now, I mean, I don't I don't Ross. I don't have him anywhere. I'm not rostering uh, Gosling in any league. So. You know, I got no stake in the situation. I think he's a 3-5 to 3-7 ERA pitcher who just was super lucky last year with the uh, with the Babbitt. But, you know, the Dodgers do crazy things with their pixie magic that's just like, <laughs> you know, the, the Dodgers find stuff, man. They're just like... Hey, what do you? Hey, Ma- Max Muncy, you want to hit seventy homers this year? Okay, here you go. <laughs> just go, just go and do that. Here, um, you know, uh, Julio Urias has uh, a one point seven ERA for like four years. Like, okay, sure, <laughs> whatever. Um, Andrew Heaney, uh, you know, the list goes on with what the Dodgers have been able to accomplish with very little. So, I wouldn't put it past Gosling, but. Yeah, I I think he's probably he's probably like pretty close to like a Miles Mikolas, uh, Mer- uh, Merrill Kelly, I an ideal situation for them. So like not in- incredible K's, decent command, not an amazing ERA, but then you throw in the Dodgers in the mix and Gosling ends up with like a sub three year a and you're like, I don't know, man, he shouldn't be a sub three year a, but there you go. All right, great. I'm going to ask this is going to hurt me to ask Alec <laughs> Manoa or Tony Gosselin. Oh no, no, I'm still Manoa more than okay. Gosling. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure you haven't left off, left the, <laughs> Left no, no, here. I think I think Manoa. I'm hoping for like a Logan Webb, which I I like Logan Webb. I mean, I, that's not a put down on Manoa. I think Manoa could be. Hopefully, Manoa is around. Like, I'm hoping he's still around the top 25 starter. Uh, Manoa Gosling, I think, is like a top 50. Like, he's probably a top 50 starter. But, you know, when you throw in getting lucky on Babbitt, maybe maybe he's better. But I don't think like Gosling, I feel like, is like a number four to five fantasy starter. And Manoa is hopefully a number two at worst. Yeah. So I, I will say we, we've talked about how the Dodgers and their their voodoo magic. And, and really, it's, it's like the Babbitt advantage is has just been crazy over the last few years. They literally last year. They led it in 2021. They were second in 2020 and 2019. Like they have been just magic with their BABIP for pitchers. And some of that has to do with their, you know, the way that they run numbers, the way that they put their fielders in the right position. This year, without the advantage of the shift, they're 10th worst gray. So, I mean, standard, it's early, whatever, whatever, whatever. But like, I'm not necessarily. I think this is where we see whether Tony Gonsolin is a low three ZRA guy or if he's more yeah, you high three four. Right. right. Yeah. No, you might be right. And even like uh, Urias, I don't have his numbers in front of me, but I feel like he's even struggled a bit more this year than he has in past years. So yeah, maybe the end of the shift is hurting the Dodgers pitchers more than it's, uh, you know, maybe hurted some, uh, hurted. <laughs> maybe it's hurted. <laughs> Anyway, let's move yeah. on. Well, on. On the note of herded, let's move on. Yeah, you mentioned your ass. Maybe, I'm just uh, you know what? Maybe Ryan Presley is herded. <laughs> Very <laughs> possible that Ryan Presley is herded because he got a save on Friday. Then Brian Brian Abreu got saves Saturday and Sunday. Now, Abreu's been nasty, so it's really not a thing to like have him get saves. He's had a 41% K rate, a 0.73 or A. An 089 whip. Like he's been right. Bobby or Brian Abreu has been lights out 
But Ryan Presley was the closer last year. He's been the closer. We all thought he was the closer. I have him on several teams, Gray, because I thought he was the closer. Uh, is there something going on here? Like, is he? I mean, Dusty said he's not injured, but Dusty just. I, I've, I've followed enough Dusty to know that means nothing. <laughs> Like, where are you at on Ryan Presley? Should we just be grabbing Brian Abreu? I just Abreu thought, the, uh, I, just thought I just had a, a visual of Dusty uh, so, telling someone to uh, follow him, uh, like to a, a destination in the car, like, "Hey, follow me," like that sort of thing, and then just being like, "Where's Dusty go?" <laughs> <laughs> and just being lost for like two hours. Like I thought he said it was five minutes away. Like. <laughs> <laughs> just follow Dusty, man. That's what he said. Follow him. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think Brian Abreu, if nothing else, Abreu is a guy who should be rostered in every league because he looks like one of those, like, you know, big time, like, just middle relievers who just is helpful everywhere. And even, like, in our RCL league, I drafted Brian Abreu and he hasn't, I haven't even considered dropping him at any point because he's just like, if you look at his numbers, putting aside this year at 20 in 2022, he had 60 innings of a 1.94 ERA with a 13.1 K per nine. Like <laughs> Brian Abreu is really good, man. Like, so I'm, I'm in on Brian Abreu, whether he gets saves or not. So let's, you know, so say that, put that aside. So Abreu should be rostered. Now, with that aside, Presley, I don't know what's going on with him. I, you know, I think I, he was sick, supposedly, uh, flu maybe. I think, like, Presley, unless Presley goes on the I.L., he feels like the closer. Like it's just a matter of. I think he was sick, so I think that's what where he was. I think Presley's gonna be. You know, he may not be the everyday guy, and he has he hasn't been lights out. But it's like, what else are you doing? If Presley's not injured, what else are you gonna do with him? Like he's not. Like he's not gonna work the seventh inning you know so i don't know man i think presley's still fine for saves but with that said i would grab brian abreu in every league because he's really good yeah presley has had two bad outings this year in his you know eight and a third innings when we're this early with a reliever two bad outings makes it look a lot worse than it has been but i think it is presley's job and i think that mainly because dusty's in charge <laughs> And he's he's but very much a veteran keeps his job type of guy. I would assume Abreu is kind of the firefighter. And yeah, if, if something's wrong with Presley, uh, I do believe he you know Abreu is the next guy. And I'm with you that you know you kind of take him whether or not like you need the saves or not. You can just start him, especially in any kind of daily league. All right, let's uh, let's talk about Eduardo Red Rodriguez real quick, and then we'll we'll give some uh, pickups. He has 31 innings this year, 25 Ks, five walks, a 2.32 ERA, and 0.84 WHIP. Changeup is back to being not a POS like it was last year. The vertical <laughs> and horizontal break is back on it. Are you are you back in on Eduardo Rodriguez? Are you trying to move him as fast as humanly possible for this all? caves in on itself what are you doing with eduardo rodriguez uh yeah so i i mentioned before with like uh gosling that merrill kelly miles nicholas could be like you know the that type of outcome is what i would expect from gosling i feel like Ed, eduardo eduardo rodriguez feels similar in that like he's gonna be you know maybe seven and a half k per nine maybe Maybe a two walk per nine, maybe a three point five ish ERA on a, a terrible team, by the way. Good, good park, but terrible team. So you know, wins are probably going to be uh, few and far between. I, I like Eduardo Rodriguez. I just wouldn't go as far as to say like this is some sort of like you know. A breakout or something like he's always you know in his career the best eduardo rodriguez has been has been like a 3.8 uh era guy and you know maybe a little bit better than that but not much and 
you know, at times in his career, he's had better strikeouts. I don't think we're going to see those. Like right now, it doesn't look like he is going to get back to like a 10 and a half K per nine like he was at his best moments in like, you know, 2019 or or 2018 or 20 or 2021. Like it it doesn't seem like we're getting back to that 10.5 K per nine area. So I I like Eduardo Rodriguez, but I would also look at him like, you know, maybe a fantasy number five ish, like maybe a four at moments, maybe a six at moments. But, you know, you know, somewhere in, in that range where he has he has good starts and then also uh, games where like in tough matchups. I don't know if I'd still feel 100 percent confident starting him, but. I, I like him. I just feel like he's a deeper 15-team mixed league. Eduardo Rodriguez feels like a steal. And like a guy, like in a 15-team mixed league, you feel like, wow, I really like, you know, I I, I get Edward, Eduardo Rodriguez and I'm like, you know, flying high. But in a 12-team mixed league, it feels like the kind of guy where he might be the first one off of my team if someone appears on waivers that is better. So it's like it's a, only a matter of a few, uh, you know, a few teams. But I think a 12 team mixed league, he's borderline uh, rosterable. And then in a 15 team mixed league, he's like really a solid back end guy. Yeah, I'm going to say I have never in my life understood the Eduardo Rodriguez fascination. Like you read off the numbers, like at his best, he got some K's and he was like a high threes ERA with a whip that was awful. Like I just never really understood the Eduardo Rodriguez. So I'm, I'm not back in um, for what it's worth. He has a 220 BABIP and 83% left on base at a, a sub 10 home run to fly ball rate. All those would be career best. So he's getting lucky. He has a 396 Sierra, a 345 whip. The 396 Sierra sounds a lot closer to the Eduardo Rodriguez we know. Um, even like I, I said, his changeup is back to not being terrible. But like even when he had that going, he was still, again, a high threes, low fours with a bad whip guy. I really have zero interest in Eduardo Rodriguez. It, it, outside of like a matchup play, even in a 12 team or honestly, um, he, he's the guy, as you mentioned, he's like the guy I'm cutting to pick up the next streamer. All right, Greg, we're getting a little long here. Why don't you give the people some pickups and then we'll get out of here. Okay. Uh, so uh, Braxton Garrett uh, looks like he could potentially be like basically what I was saying for Edward, Eduardo Rodriguez. Like I could see, Braxton Garrett being also a similar sort of, uh, you know, seven and a half to eight K per nine, uh, good command, maybe a 3.5 ish ERA, not great for wins because of the Marlins, but you know, I I like Braxton Garrett a lot. I think also, um, you know, Tyler Wells (laughs) also not necessarily great for strikeouts, but has excellent command. And by the way, with Garrett and Rodriguez and Wells, if you have good command, there's less of a chance for blowups, which is, you know, for for streaming, that's actually even better because this way it's like if you stream a guy, you're not going to get one of those like three inning, seven earned runs, like just killer <laughs> Just that ruins your entire week. So, you know, Tyler Wells, Braxton Garrett, uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. So then on the hitting side, Brandon Marsh. You know, it's funny how the universe works. So uh, Brandon Marsh was traded for Logan O'Hoppy not not that long ago, less than a year. And now Brandon Marsh is breaking out for the Phillies. And the Angels are, you know... They're doing angel stuff. (laughs) The angels are being led by Otani Trout and those other guys. Um, So, yeah, Brandon Marsh, though, looks like I, you know, I I wrote a sleeper post on him last year. I really like Brandon Marsh. I I always was kind of surprised that no one really like was uh, that in on Marsh because like he's got power and speed. So 
you know, if you have power and speed, you can do a lot wrong and still do very well for fantasy. Um, and he's also this year, he's really cut his strikeouts. So he looks good. Um, there's also Jose Alvarado in the uh, st- sticking with the Phillies theme. Jose Alvarado in the bullpen looks good. Um, Boxberger looks like I would say Boxberger or Hughes uh, potentially for the Cubs saves. Um, Matt Moore looks great. Uh, Corey Corey Jolks uh, on the Astros. So he's a a guy who I'm not really 100% sure why this is, but he looks amazing when you look at his minor league numbers. I guess it's a a matter of him just being a quad uh, A player because, like, if you look at uh, Corey Jolks' numbers, you're like, wow, he hit 31 homers last year and 22 steals and 270 with only 22% strikeout rate in triple A. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds really good. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a quad A thing because he's just not – no one really cares about Corey Jokes. But, I mean, he's been hitting. He's hitting like 330 as of the recording of this uh, podcast. So, And also Gavin Smith in Arizona has been hitting a bit. So, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's some names for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we covered uh, just about every position they, that anybody could want – somebody and if you have specific questions you can come out to the comment section on Rasball or on youtube ask your questions there and we'll get back to you as always thanks greg talk to you next week lates